Adventures in Education. COVID-19 exposes continued digital divide in CCSD and one solution. Joe Bustillo's here. We're beginning the fourth week of our CCSD remote learning experimentation. Fifth week of the shelter in place order, but last week was spring break, so our vestigial attachment to dates persists. The week before spring break, our school's music specials teacher reported that he had 88 students report in on his classes hosted on the Seesaw service. Considering that there was no forewarning when we left campus on Friday, March 13th, that we would not be allowed to return to campus, and that we were expected to continue instruction from home, getting responses from 88 students, families, was pretty good. Problem is that we have over 350 students. Getting 88 out of 350, or about 24%, to connect to an online portal isn't spectacular. But it's only one measure. Beginning in week two, homeroom teachers were calling every student at least once a week. But many were reporting that lots of families had no technology at home to facilitate any form of online learning. We are over 25 years into this era of the information superhighway. But according to a 2019 Pew report, just over one half of lower income American households making less than $30,000 per year have a desktop or laptop computer at home and about the same number have access to broadband internet. Only 36% have tablet computers at home, which are entirely dependent on access to the internet to be useful. While 71% have access to smartphones, doubling the number since 2013, those with access only to smartphones are going to be at a huge disadvantage compared to families with access to high-speed internet and a desktop or laptop computer. This isn't to suggest that many families are quite ingenious when it comes to doing great things with very little. But let's not ignore how much more difficult remote learning can be on a small screen versus a laptop or desktop computer. So with the last month or so left in the current school year and the strong possibility that we will remain in remote learning mode until the fall, what can we do? For low-income families in Clark County, the problem of having a good internet connection can be addressed by contacting Cox via their customer service line at 702-383-4000 and ask about the two-month free internet service called Connect to Complete. The customer service line again is 702-383-4000. I contacted one store that is near my school, a Cox authorized retailer on Craig Road in North Las Vegas, and asked what a potential customer needs to get the free service. The sales rep said that they will look up the customer's address to see if they qualify for the program, and that's it. After the two months, families are charged $10 a month for the connection. So a family can either go to a local store or contact them via their customer service number at 702-383-4000, and that takes care of getting a good internet connection. What to connect to the internet to facilitate remote learning is another question that I will investigate next time. In the meantime, here's a list of places where you might go to set up your free internet. There is a customer service number, 702-383-4000, and then there are listed three additional uh, walk-in places that you could go to. Cox promotes free Wi-Fi spots around Las Vegas, but according to the map of North Las Vegas, there are none in the neighborhood of Fitzgerald Elementary. Do you have any suggestions about how to get a good internet connection to help with our current remote learning situation? Please feel free to drop me a comment on my YouTube channel or in wherever you are watching this video. Thank you.